Hello, welcome back to a new video. So today I want to talk about cost of living in Thailand as someone who lives in Thailand for quite a few months now. I thought I'd make a video about how much it cost me to pay for rent and food and electricity. <sighs> So first of all, the rent of my condo or apartment. For some reason in Thailand, they don't call apartments apartments. They call them condos, like condominium. So I can't show you my condo for privacy reasons, but I can give you a brief description of what it looks like. Uh, first of all, it costs about 10,000 baht per month, which is like 300 US dollars or 237 pounds, which is insane for what you get for the price. I was living in Manchester, and I had an apartment which was probably less than half the size of my current condo in Thailand. And I kid you not, I was paying like £900 a month for rent, plus nearly £100 on electricity and water. I really didn't like my place in Manchester. It's very small. The bedroom, there wasn't really a bedroom. The bed was just in the living room with like a semi kind of half wall. It wasn't really a proper wall because it didn't completely go around the bedroom. And it was just like a small narrow corridor. It was in a very nice building, the Beetham Tower with a very nice view, but the apartment was so tiny. In comparison to that, I feel like this condo I'm living in is huge, it is massive. I've got a proper massive bedroom that I'm sitting in here now. Now, which is actually a proper bedroom divided from the living room with an actual wall and a door and there's a living room which is like 1.5 times the size of the bedroom which is also really nice I don't like having the bed in my living room as someone who lived in Japan for quite a few years in one bedroom apartments where it's basically just one big one room I wouldn't even say it's a big room it's just one room with a bed in it plus like a kitchen in the corridor and I don't like having the bed in the living room because when I wake up, I like to close the bedroom door, get out of the bedroom and not see the bed again until I go to bed in the night. So I really cannot stress enough how nice it is to have a separate bedroom and a separate living room. The living room's really nice. It's got a big sofa and it came with a TV and furniture came with the place. So we didn't really have to buy any furniture apart from a few things like some pillowcases, bed sheets and the topping for the mattress because the mattress was pretty hard. And we've also got a separate kitchen room, which is like half the size of the bedroom, which is also really nice because again, I'm used to living in Japanese apartments where they don't really have a proper dedicated kitchen. They just have a hallway and then like a counter with a sink and a stove and some space for chopping food. That's not really a kitchen. I consider a kitchen to be a completely isolated room where you do cooking, which is what we have here. And it's really nice. We also got a very nice balcony with a great view of Bangkok. And we live kind of central. I'm kind of doxing myself now. Maybe I should cut that. Uh, we do not live central at all, I lied. We actually live on the outskirts of Bangkok. And still the price is pretty good considering we're so close to the center of the capital city of the entire country. I mean, can you imagine living in London on the outskirts of London paying £240 for a really nice high rise condo? I really doubt you'd be able to get anything like this. I mean, a place like this in London would probably cost you like £1,500 a month easily. So we got a nice place, really big. I'd say it's like 120 square meters. It feels massive. Maybe you don't think it's big if you live in like a big house or a detached house somewhere in Europe or America, but me, as for me, someone coming from living in a lot of small, tiny apartments in Japan, I feel like this is easily the biggest apartment I've ever lived in. And also at the same time, the cheapest apartment I've ever lived in. Plus the building has its own gym and swimming pool downstairs, which you can use for free. So yeah, that's like $300 a month for a rent, for renting a place like this. That's really good value for money, I believe. So we also have electricity bills. I mean, electricity bill is peanuts. It's like $30. And I'd have the air conditioning on quite a few hours during the day because it does get very hot. I mean, it is Thailand. And during the nights, we usually have the air conditioning on all night long as well. And still, the electricity bill never really goes above 30 or $40 for the whole month. In comparison to when I was living in Manchester, I was paying like 60 to 70 pounds a month for electricity. And that was before the whole cost of living energy crisis began. That was back in 2021. So I can only imagine that the electricity bills have gone up even more in the UK. And as for the internet, 
Um, I used to pay £40 a month for fibre optic internet in the UK. And here I don't actually have internet. We don't have a wide internet connection in this apartment because I just bought a unlimited an unlimited SIM card at the airport, which cost me 1000 baht, which I think is probably like £15. And you get unlimited data, 5G connection, and it's really good. Now, coming on to the food bill, so we go to the supermarket maybe once a week, maybe five times a month. And every time we go to the supermarket, we usually spend about 2,500 baht or maybe 2,000 baht because we get some discounts and savings. Last time we went to the supermarket was yesterday and I think we spent 2,070 baht and we got quite a lot of food. So I'd say in total, we probably spend like 9,000 baht, 10,000 baht a month on food. But that's for two people. If you were living alone, you would obviously be paying half that. So I'd say about 4,500 baht a month for food. 4,500 baht is about $130 or 100 pounds. So for two people, I would say 200 pounds or nearly $300. So in total, we got the rent, $300. We got the food, $130 plus electricity. It's like 150 plus 300. I would say my monthly expenses for the bare basic stuff, rent, food, electricity, is like $450 or maybe just round up to $500 a month for the bare basic stuff. So yeah, I really feel like I have a good quality of life considering how much I'm paying. It's not like I'm living in poverty. I'm not living in the slums or some crap hole. I've lived in a lot of countries. I've lived in Japan, Berlin, Rotterdam, Manchester, and this is honestly the cheapest place I've lived in and also the best and nicest place I've lived in. Hello, welcome back to a new episode of Cooking with Daniel. So since we talked about food and shopping, I thought I'd show you what kind of food I bought yesterday and the dish that I made using these ingredients. I'm gonna make the perfect stir-fried beef foo with vegetables. Okay, so first of all, you wanna get your slab of beef and slap it around a bit. Maybe you want to tenderize the beef a bit because it can be a bit chewy and then cut it into strips so it's easy to put into your mouth. For seasoning, I like to use this garlic and herb seasoning. So I just sprinkle some of that on top of it and then I also add a little bit of salt sometimes but today we're not going to use salt from the beginning because I'm going to use salted butter for the sauce. Okay so we're going to need onions as well so chop those up. And we're also going to use some Japanese mushrooms going to cut the ends off and then just put it all into the frying pan. You want to cook the onions and the mushrooms first. Actually, you should cook the onions first before anything because something I keep doing wrong, a mistake I keep making with my cooking is I don't cook the onions enough and they keep coming out crunchy and raw even though I've cooked them for quite a long time. So I think I need to start adding the onions first before anything else. So yeah, just fry that up until it's golden brown. And then we're just going to drop the meat into the frying pan too and cook that all together until everything's golden brown. And this is where I add my secret weapon, salted butter. Now we don't want too much butter, I just wanted to cut off a little knob but I kind of had an accident and dropped the whole thing into the frying pan. And that is how you make perfect stir-fried beef with onions and mushrooms. Now in hindsight, it wasn't salty enough, so I added a bit more salt and also the beef was kind of chewy. So I don't know if I needed to tenderize the meat more or maybe just get a better cut of beef. The beef was kind of cheap, so it was like not a very good cut of beef. Maybe something more like a Wagyu steak would be better. 